Golden! Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to WCYE, World Changes Youth Experience, where you put the E in WCYE. That's right. You are the experience. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords. None of me and all of you. I declare every heart is anointed to receive and every ear is anointed to hear. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, move through every row, through every aisle, and touch each student. Prep them for this word that comes forth that will yield fruit, that will yield change in their everyday lives. In Jesus' name I pray, all that agrees. it. Amen, amen, amen. So two weeks ago, I gave the students that were here index cards. And on those index cards, I instructed you to write down things that you were dealing with that you wanted to make an exchange with God for and I wanted us to solidify it in worship, which is why we move praise and worship to the end of service instead of at the beginning. One, because as you can see, students are still trickling in and we didn't want anybody to miss out on praise and worship. But when I took those note cards to my office and me and the staff looked at them, I was I went through a few emotions. The first emotion was I was sad. The second emotion was I was concerned. The third emotion was I was angry. The emotion that I feel right now is I'm ready. So what am I ready to do? I'm ready to combat the plans of the enemy concerning each and every one of you. God has a plan for each and every one of you, but so does Satan. And he's going to be very adamant about trying to make sure that you listen to his story, to his version, to his suggestions, more than you listen to the promises of God, more than you listen to the truth about who you are. Clap one time if that makes sense. Today, my message title is, it's who I am, not who I'm trying to be. It's who I am, not who I'm trying to be. So I wanna show you, and I, I did this on purpose. On purpose, I didn't want any of you to put your names on the card because I wanted to protect your identity. However, I'm gonna put some of the things that were written down on the cards on the screen. What is something I'm tired of or something that I want to make an exchange with God of? Being attacked by lust, a victim mentality, and being mediocre and lazy. For some reason, whoever wrote this feels like that's who they are. Go to the next one. Stress. Procrastination, they feel like they're a procrastinator. Not practicing what I preach, right? Keep going. Doubting myself when God has showed me my power. So it's like even though God has shown me who I am, I still doubt it. Keep going. The feeling of insecurity and the feeling that I'm not good enough. I was sad because I know the truth. I teach the truth. But for some reason, because I only get you on Sunday, probability tries to come in. And what you give your ear to, the majority of, of the time, is what begins to pull you. So you begin to identify with things that don't belong to you. You begin to correspond with things that don't belong to you. Go to the next one. I am tired of feeling lonely. 
I'm tired of dealing with toxic friends. I'm tired of constantly feeling guilty for no reason. I'm tired of getting too deep in my thoughts that it feels like I'm being watched and I'm judging myself for everything I enjoy and do. I'm tired. These are coming from young people. 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. Keep going. Unhappiness, insecurity, unhappiness. I'm worried about the future, worried about what others think of me. People bondage, approval addiction. Keep going. Stress, anxiety, anger, depression, heartbreak, sadness, everything Jesus died on the cross and took on himself so that you don't have to have. Keep going. God, take away my worries about my future and overwhelm me with strength to fight my battles. Keep going. Lord, please help remove my anxiety and all of my worries. Keep going. Not being good enough to play soccer, not being accepted into heaven for doing things wrong. You see why I was angry? People don't go to hell for sin, they go to hell for what? I say what? Say what? Reject, rejecting Jesus. Do you believe that though? We know it, just like when I was growing up. I knew certain things. I knew the recipe of God. I just never started cooking because, I don't know, it's it like I grew up in a church, so I believe by default and not by true personal desire. It wasn't a real thirst that I had for him. It was more like, well, I grew up in a Christian house. I was drugged to the church every Wednesday, every Friday, every Sunday, every Tuesday, right? So I believed by default because I felt like I didn't have a choice. But when life started hitting, all of the seeds that were planted in me began to come up like a tree sprouting through the ground and it began to grow in me. But I had to make the decision to choose to believe. The feeling of not being enough, the feeling of comparing yourself to others, comparing your walk with others. Keep going. Dealing with caring whether my friends really like me or not. Letting others' reactions to me change who I am. Procrastinating from stress, stressing about college. Keep going. Being late, not caring not doing good in school, keep going. Overthinking, keep going. Self-doubt, am I good succeed in what I want to regarding my future? Will I earn a scholarship to help my family? Keep going. I am personally struggling with changing jobs to being in a space where I'm wanted. Keep going. That's all the ones we got. Now, there was like 50 more, but I only gave them a certain few because I didn't want to put too much time on the problem. Uh-oh. Babe, we got to get a new iPad. Thank God for my trusty iPhone. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and start this message. It's who I am. It's not who I'm trying to be. There's three words that I want to define for you before I get to my first point. I have five points total, but I need you guys to rock with me. I really need you to pay attention. I need you to lock in, okay? The first word that I want to define for you is aspire. Everybody say aspire. What does aspire mean? Who knows what aspire mean? Huh? Who said that? What are they talking about? Oh, what did you say? who you want to be, so aspire. Let's put the definition up. It's a direction of one's hope or ambitions towards achieving something. So yeah, you pretty much summarized it, all right? The next definition I want to give you is description. Everybody say description. Let's define description. A description is a spoken or written representation or account of a person, object, or event. So a description, if I'm describing if, if I'm describing Chris, Chris, stand up. If I'm describing Chris, Chris is slim with a white jacket, uh, a nice graphic, black graphic tee, blue jeans, gray jeans, grayish, bluish jeans, and black Nikes. 
right? I just eloquently describe Chris. So what I see is what I get. I just gave a description of Chris. Clap one time if that makes sense. The next definition I want to give you is the definition of ambition. Everybody say ambition. Okay. Ambition is a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. I'm ambitious. I'm going to get it. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it do what it do. I can do it. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take, right? Here's my first point. Everything the New Testament says about you is a description, not an aspiration. Everything that the New Testament says about you is a description. It is not an aspiration. What do you mean by that, Pastor Anthony? Well, I just defined aspiration. Let's go back to aspiration. Aspiration is a direction one's hope and ambitions towards achieving something, meaning I'm going to get there. However, a description, when you put that definition back up, is a spoken or written representation of who the person is. So just like I just described to you, Chris, the Bible is trying to describe to you, not trying, but it's describing to you who you are. The trying part comes in where do you believe what the Bible says about you or not? It says you're righteous. I've used this illustration several times. There are words that are synonymous with the word righteous. You are the righteousness of God. That's who you are. Whether you believe it or not, it's who you are. Well, what's the importance of belief? Because you can't walk in it unless you believe it. However, it's still who you are. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's who you are, not who you're trying to be. It's who you are, not who you're trying to be. It's who you are, not who you're trying to be. Let's go to our first scripture. Everything the New Testament says about you are not aspirations, they are descriptions. These aren't things we are aspiring to be. It's who we are based off of what Christ has done for us. Let's go to 1 John 2, 27 in the New Living Translation. 1 John 2.27 in the New Living Translation. It was up, it went away, now it's back. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. The key to not believing what was written on those cards is your direct connection to Jesus Christ. You're not perfect. He's perfect. And he's on the inside of you. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's not the perfection from you that we're expecting. It's the perfection from Christ in you that comes out through you. So when you walk into a situation, your natural body is going to have anxiety and fear about a thing. But because of your direct connection with Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all of my cares, all of my worries on him. Well, how do you apply that, Pastor Ant? Every time I come out here, I'm nervous. I've been teaching the Word of God for over 15 doggone years, and it has yet to fail that I've come out here with a level of nervousness on me. But it requires me, right, to depend on God. Do I get butterflies in my stomach? Yeah. But the butterflies I get now, they fly in line. They, 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 they organize now. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know who he is, and I know who I am in him. Clap one time if that makes sense. Constance and I are trying to build up an army of young people who are articulate in their faith who are bold as lions in their faith. You guys, you remember the show Power Rangers? No? Y'all remember that show? You had the Red Ranger, you had the Black Ranger. My, my dude was the Black Ranger, the Master Don. That was, that was his dinosaur, right? Master Don, 
mess done, right? But any one of those Power Rangers could go somewhere and be elite wherever they are. They were better when they were together. However, on their own, they were still beast. Clap one time if that makes sense. That's what Pastor Constance, Alyssa, and I are trying to build with you guys. I don't care what college you go to. I don't care what school you go to. You should be able to be articulate, bold, and upright in your faith. Not because, you know, you've done all of the right things and you've checked off the things on the checklist, but you've checked off the main thing, which is, I can't survive without Christ in me. Clap one time if that makes sense. I need you guys to get this. My second point, our identity is directly infused in who Christ is and our ability to believe in who we are in him. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 in the Mirror Bible. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 in the Mirror Bible. It says, of God's doing are we in Christ. So it wasn't us, it was God that made this happen. Of God's doing <clears throat> are we in Christ. He is both the genesis, the beginning, and the genius of our wisdom. A wisdom that reveals how righteous, sanctified, and redeemed we already are in him. Do you see the tense? It's not past tense. It's not something that we're aspiring to, something that we're going to arrive to. Right now, you are the righteousness of God. Repeat after me. Say, right now. No, you got to declare this thing. I said bold. I'm building up bold soldiers. Right now, I am the righteousness of God, period. This is what you have to say to yourself when the enemy is trying to beat you over the head with you're not enough, with well maybe, well maybe, well maybe all this stuff is fake. You have to open up your mouth and speak, why? Because the enemy is gonna try and fight you in your thoughts. The battle is always going to be here, but you don't fight thoughts with thoughts, you fight thoughts with what? I said, you fight thoughts with what? But not just any words, God's words, and you open up your mouth and you declare them, which is why when I say repeat after me, you should boldly declare it because the fight that's coming for you, the, the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Would you willingly let somebody steal something from you? It'd be different if the enemy had a gun, but we're talking about a defeated enemy. It's not like he's coming up here holding a gun to your head and you're going to die. You have authority over him. It's about time that you young people put the enemy where he belongs, under your feet. Clap one time if that makes sense. I need you to get this because I can't go home with you. And that's where the fight is. It's in your bedroom when you close that door. It's on the school bus when you're going to school and you got people misunderstanding you or you may not be able to afford the things that the majority wear so you consider yourself the minority. I'm not like everybody else. You wasn't created to be like everybody else. You were created to stand out. But now I'm trying to get you to stand up and stand out. Because for some reason the enemy has convinced you that being different is wrong and blending in is cool. See, if you blend in, it's hard to be seen. But if you stand out in the midst of a whole bunch of the same, now you become leaders. Now you start walking in who you are and who God created you to be. Clap one time if that makes sense. I'm sorry, I ain't trying to scream. I'm, am I screaming? I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me stop screaming. I wrote this down and I wanna make sure that I say it like I wrote it. Mankind's association and Jesus is God's doing. In God's economy, Jesus Christ represents us. What mankind could never achieve through personal discipline and willpower as taught in every religion, God's faith accomplished in Christ. Of his design, we are in Christ. We are associated in oneness with him. Our wisdom is sourced in this union. 
also our righteousness and holiness originate from him. Holiness equals wholeness and harmony of a person's spirit, soul, and body. Our redemption is sanctioned in him. He redeemed our identity, our sanity, our health, our joy, our peace, our innocence, and our complete well-being. It is from him that we take our origin as new creatures. Clap one time if that makes sense. Everything that we're looking for is in Christ. Everything that's in Christ is in you. When God sees you, he sees Christ. What does God think about me? Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, God thinks Jesus about me. It don't matter what you think about you. I hate to say it this way, but it's time for WCYE to get over themselves. Get over yourself and get into the fact that Christ is on the inside of you. He resides in you. He lives in you. But he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way up out of you. You have to acknowledge that he's in you. You have to get to a point where when the troubled day comes and it comes, he said, in this world, you'll have trials, you'll have tribulations. What does that mean? That means everything, every day isn't going to be sunshine. Attacks are going to come your way. But what do you do when those attacks come? Will you buckle and fold? Or will you acknowledge Christ is in me and you tap into the wisdom? Wait a minute. The same God that said, let there be light. The same God that said that no weapon formed against me lives on, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He's on the inside of me. Lord, I'm tapping into that wisdom. Lord, I'm tapping into that strength, just like I do every time I come out here. Anthony Adams in and of himself is lame. It's Christ in me. It's the anointing on me. I'm dripping in it. I'm not bragging about it. It is what it is. You are dripping with anointing. Why are you putting up with fear? Kiwis can't grow in Atlanta because of the climate. Stress, worry, depression should not be able to grow inside of you because of the climate of what's on the inside of you. Jesus Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is on the inside of you. And where he is, there's no room for certain things to be able to grow. But it's up to you to say, this doesn't belong to me. I refuse to accept it. Clap one time if that makes sense. Let's keep going. Point number three, when God sees us, he sees Jesus. But Pastor Ant, that's not what I see when I look into the mirror. Pastor Ant, I curse. I don't care about that. Pastor Ant, I lie. I don't care about that. Pastor Ann, I lost my virginity and I'm afraid because the one that I lost my virginity to just seemed like I was just like another mission to accomplish, like I'm a, 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 a mission on Call of Duty or something. It's like once he was done with me, he went on to the next one and I, I don't know how to tell anybody. I don't, know how to, I, don't, I don't know how to move. It's like, man, quit making it about the behavior. Your belief changes your behavior, okay? The problem is you keep trying to change your behavior. No, that's not how that works. If you believe right, you'll live right. Clap one time if that makes sense. I said, if you believe right, you'll live right. Matter of fact, repeat after me. Say, if I believe right, no, you got to declare it. You got to say it. Put some, put, say, it, say it like you're tired of going through what you're going through. If I believe right, I'll live right. That's how that goes. What are you believing? Whose report are you choosing to believe? Let's go to Romans 5, 8 through 12 in the TPT. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 8 through 12 in the TPT. It says, but Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us for through the blood of Jesus, through what? Through what? Through what? Through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration. Declarations are intended to be what? Are intended to be what? What? Powerful. Declarations are intended to be powerful. 
So we have heard the uh, powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my spirit. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. So to the person that put that uh, thing on the uh, card where it says, I feel like uh, I won't make it into heaven, put it back up. He said, I feel like I won't make it into heaven. And then be ready to go right back to the scripture. Because my assignment today is to attack those, those lies that the enemy has been trying to infiltrate into your thinking. I know how tough it is being a doggone teenager. For some reason, God has given me the gift to remember with specific detail the feelings and emotions and the traumas that I had as a young person, as a teenager, and how I overcame them. God keeps them at the forefront of my mind. So when you say, not being, I'm, not, I'm tired of not being good enough to play soccer, not being accepted into heaven for doing things wrong, go back to the scripture. That's a lie that someone is believing. It's a lie. Because now that we are at peace with God and because we share in his resurrection life, how much more will we, will we be? Keep going. Keep going. Rescued from sin's dominion. Now go back to where you just was, okay. So it says, so if while we were still enemies, this, is, this means before you chose to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, while we were still enemies, before you even knew who God was, before you even heard the name Jesus, while we were still enemies, before you were even conceived into your mother's womb, while we were still enemies, God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son, then something greater than friendship is ours. Now that we are at peace with God, and because we share in his resurrection life, how much more we will be rescued from sin's dominion, 11. And even more than that, it keeps going, we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to God, all because of who? All because of who? All because, no, 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 no. When you say his name, it should be with power because it's, it's about time that you guys begin to learn how to weaponize the name of Jesus towards the enemy. As I said, I can't go home with you, so my assignment today is to teach you how to fight at home. Clap one time if that makes sense. So it says, and even more than that, we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to God. All because of who? Yeah, all because of who? All because of who? Yeah, let's get it. And even more, okay, keep going to number 12. When Adam sinned, this is the explanation, right? When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience, right? And death was the result, right? And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity because all have sinned. How do we get into a place where we have to make a choice between I'm under the covenant of what Adam did, which leads to death, or I'm under the covenant of what Jesus did, which leads to life? How do we get there? Because Adam was the first. He was the first. The first what? The first everything, right? Adam was the first. So things heavily weighed on him concerning the rest of humanity. Clap one time if that makes sense. But Jesus. Somebody say, but Jesus. No, say it with your chest, but Jesus. But when Jesus came in, he reconciled us back to God. We're all good. It's not who you're trying to be, it's who you are. It's who I am, it's not who I'm trying to be. It's who I am, it's not who I'm trying to be. Pastor Ant, would you call yourself a great father? I would call myself a father that has made many mistakes, but in Christ, I'm the greatest father you'll ever see. I'm the righteousness of God. Put up the words that are synonymous with righteous. So that you understand who you are.
What are these words? When you read these words, what are you reading? Talk to me. When you read these words, what are you reading? Do you know? Huh? Say it again. Say it one more time. It's who we are. You know it, but do you believe it? Do you believe it when you lose a game? Do you believe it when your parents tell you no? Do you believe it when you made a mistake? Do you believe it when others seem to be progressing at a, at, an, at a quicker rate than you are? Do you believe it? Because that's one thing that Pastor Constance and I can't do for you. We can't believe for you. I can't. You have to believe for you. You have to know how God views you. So when God sees you, who does he see? Who does he say it? Who? 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 Say it with your chest. Say it like you're mad. Say it like you're tired of going through the same thing over and over and over again. Jesus! Jesus! Some of you just got to get to the point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You've been fighting the same battle over and over and over and over and over again. Guess what? There's other battles. Yeah. Hmm. There's a difference between aging in grace and growing in grace. Clap one time if that makes sense. Who knows the difference? Because you clapped, Chris. Hallelujah. Aging can just basically mean that you're just getting older, mm -hmm. but growing can mean that you're maturing. Come on, boy. Doggone it, boy. Y'all make some noise for Chris. What does it, get a bite back to him. Chris, what does it take to age? To age mean... No, 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 not what it means. What does it take in order to age? Time. Time. Literally, all you have to do is eat, sleep, and wake up. Every day. And you'll do what? Age. How many of you sometimes feel like you're just existing? Days seem mechanical. I see you. I see your hands. Days seem mechanical. It's like, okay, I get up, I put on my clothes, I brush. Well, let me put it in order. I wake up, I wash my face, brush my teeth, take a shower, right? At nighttime and in the morning time, right? <laughs> right? And then I go to school, and it's like, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I got to do, you go, they still do homeroom? No? Yes? No? Y'all do homeroom still, right? Some schools, okay. Well, they got the block schedules, all that stuff. I don't know. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. But anyway, you wake up, you go to school, you do what the teacher do, tell you to do. Uh, it may be certain instances where you need more help than the rest of the class, but then fear comes in, and I don't want to seem like I'm stupid. I don't want to seem like I'm slow, so I don't want to raise my hand and ask the right questions. So I wait to after class, but the teacher is so overwhelmed because we've got 43 kids in the class, so when I come to her after class, she kind of shoes me off with sign up for study hall, but then I don't have access to do study hall because I have to be home because I have little siblings at home, and my mom works a night shift. So by the time I get home, I got to be an adult because I know I'm a kid, but I'm a kid with adult responsibilities because dad's not there and it's just me and mom and I got this and I got that and I got this and I got that. You see how easy it is to age and get caught up in a vicious cycle of the same thing over and over and over again? No, get off of the rat wheel. God came so that you can have life. Jesus came so that you can have life and not just have life, but have it what? More abundantly. There's ideas on the inside of you. There's inventions on the inside of you. There's dreams on the inside of you. And these aren't things that you should be aspiring to. These are things that you've already got the goods for. When? 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 Do you believe it, though? What the dude, uh, uh, J. Main, say from Chicago? It hit different. It hit different. 
It's one thing to know it. It's another thing to walk in it. It's one thing to know I'm a man. It's another thing to walk in manhood. It's one thing to know you're a girl and one thing to know you're a woman. It's a whole other thing to walk in it. It hit different. It's time for you guys to start soldiering up and walking in who God created you to be. Clap one time if that makes sense. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? I'm not angry at you. Point number four. I did point number three, yes? I did point number three, yes? Point number four. Righteousness comes by believing, not achieving. Repeat after me. Say, righteousness comes by believing, not achieving. What does that mean? Who can articulate to me what that means? What does that mean to you? Let's get the mic right here, right here. Hallelujah. So righteousness in believing is like hoping what you dream of mm -hmm. and not achieving, which is conquering things by yourself. I love that. Right here. Right behind you. you he said what you said. Did you have your hand raised? Go ahead. Huh? Say it like you're going to say it, though. Can we turn this mic up? I can't hear him up here. You got to believe that you're righteous. It's like, it's an understanding. Achieving it is impossible. It's like you trying to, it's like, it's like a dog trying to catch his tail. It's, it's like a what? It's like a dog trying to catch his tail. Well, you, you better know? preach, boy. It's like a dog trying to catch his tail. He can't, can he? He can't, especially my dog. I got a ride him. So when he was born, what we do to his tail? Huh? We chop that thing right on off. Why? Because it looked better. It just looked better. They said that's torture. No, we've been doing this since the 1500s. They're early, you know. Anyway, but it's like a dog trying to catch his tail. You can't catch your tail. Not my dog. You could try, but you, it's like the rat on the rat wheel, right? You get tired. You get exhausted. You have the, the looks and the feelings of accomplishing something, but not accomplishing anything. Clap one time if that makes sense. God can't flow through pride like electricity can't flow through wood. Why? Because wood isn't the conductor for electricity. Clap one time if that makes sense. Humility is trusting, relying, and depending on who? You know, you got you to know. When you talk to me, you got to say it with, with your chest. Humility is trusting, relying, and depending on who? Pride is trusting, relying, and depending on who? You see, you see how easy it is to get into self? You see how e easy it is to get into your feelings? You see how easy it is to get into the, on the rat wheel? You see how easy it is to get stuck in chasing your tail? You're the righteousness of God. It is what it is. There's no comma with that. It's a period. But you have to believe it. You have to believe it. Are you learning something? I said, are you learning something? So righteousness comes by believing, not by achieving. Let's go to Romans 4, 10 through 12 in the Mirror Bible. Romans 4, 10 through 12 in the Mirror Bible. Hallelujah. It's who I am. It's not who I'm trying to be. We got to change our tense. This is who I am. This is who I am. Pastor Ann, I lost my virginity. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm not going to take one second to get over into condemnation because I know that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But I feel bad. Well, God didn't give you your feelings for them to harm you. So when you don't understand the purpose of a thing, you'll abuse it. The purpose for your emotions is so that you can have notifications of when you need to really connect even more. I feel sad. I need Jesus. I feel weak. I need prayer. I feel... you. You clap one time if that makes sense. Romans 4, 10 through 12 in the Mirror Bible, it says, so the question is, was he reckoned righteous before or after, or after he was circumcised? Let me tell you what that means. 
Back in the Bible days, circumcision represented a covenant with God. Clap one time if that makes sense. So if you wasn't circumcised back then, it indicated that you did not have a covenant with God. Clap one time if that makes sense. For example, when David saw, David was bringing his brother some food, right? But when he saw Goliath, what did he say? Say it loud. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, what he was saying was, who is this giant that has no covenant with God? And despite of the size of the giant, David was small in stature, had enough courage and boldness and faith in his God, the same God you serve, to walk up to that humongous challenge like it was a peon. Repeat after me. Say, Satan is a peon. He's a peon, right? So now let's go back to the scripture. So the question is, was he reckoned righteous before or after he was circumcised? It is clear that Abraham's faith encounters happened long before circumcision was mentioned. Thus, Abraham received circumcision as an external symbolic seal to remind him of what God had already declared many years ago when he was first introduced to the concept of the righteousness of God. Since Abraham's supernatural fatherhood is celebrated in circumcision, it infers that he is both the father of the Jew and Gentile alike. God already engaged him in covenant as an uncircumcised Gentile. He thus represents them in all that was predicted concerning the blessing of every nation in the seed of Abraham. At the same time, he also represents all Jews as their father, especially those for whom circumcision is not merely a skin-deep religious ritual, but who engages the same principle of faith that ignited Abraham's belief. I need you to get this. Why? Because what the scripture is saying is, even in a time when circumcision was a big deal, the first mention of righteousness was with Abraham, and he wasn't circumcised at the time. He didn't get circumcised until he was an adult. Clap one time if that makes sense in a time where the Jewish custom was at birth. Now, y'all know what circumcision is, right? I don't have to explain it. Clap one time if I don't have to explain it. All right. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm like, don't make this weird. I don't, okay. All right, this is live. You know, I don't want to have to cut the stream to explain circumcision. Amen? Uh, let's see. Romans 2 and 29 in the TPT. The Passion Translation. It says, but you are Jewish because of the inward act of spiritual circumcision. <laughs> What's been circumcised? Our hearts have been circumcised. A radical change that lays bare your heart, right? It's not by the principle of law, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit at? Where's the Holy Spirit at? I can't, what do you say? Where's the Holy Spirit at? Hmm. But by the power of the Holy Spirit. For then, your praise will not come from people, but from God himself. That's a powerful scripture because it's describing your present tense, not something that you're aspiring to be. This is who you are right now. This is valid in your life right now. You can take this check to the bank, cash it, get the cash, and spend it right now. What am I spending, Pastor Ed? I don't understand your analogy. I'm saying your righteousness right now, and you can spend that. You can spend your righteousness wherever you go. How do I spend my righteousness, Pastor Ed? When you go to school, tell people about Jesus. And sometimes it's not even about you telling them about Jesus. It's about you being so confident 
and who you are in him, they begin to ask questions because they see how you respond to things. They see that dude get in your face and curse you out and you not do what you probably would have done two or three years ago. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's the God in you. It's who you are, not who you're trying to be. It's who you are, not who you're trying to be. How many of you have ever gotten around the wrong crowd, the wrong group, and you'll find yourself conforming to what that group does, to what that crew does, to what that clique does? And the whole time you're just looking for community. But you start becoming attracted to the things that they do, to the things that they say, because it, it, it look good, it sound good, it look like swag, and it seems to be accepted by the masses. Jesus Christ is accepted by the masses. And contrary to popular belief, believing in God, trusting in God is not a weak thing. If you want to be able to stand up to the things that come your way, you got to make sure that you bend the knee to the God that's on the inside of you. Clap one time if that makes sense. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? <clears throat> Genesis 15 and 6. Genesis 15 and 6 in the King James Version. Hallelujah. I skipped this one. I need to go back to it. Genesis 15 and 6. This was the first time righteousness was mentioned in the Bible. So it furthermore proves the point that righteousness comes by believing, not achieving, not by performing, but by believing. Genesis 15 and 6 in the King James Version, it says, And he, talking about Abraham, and he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Righteousness comes by what? By what? What does it say? What does the scripture say? Just read. Don't, don't complicate it. Don't complicate it. It says, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. How does righteousness come? Huh? Believe. Say what? Believe. So do you believe it? Do you own it? Do you possess it? How many of you have ever seen somebody and you be like, oh, that boy possessed? All of you are possessed with Jesus Christ. Do you know that? So where Jesus is, depression ain't got no business there. Where Jesus is, hurt should have no place there. Where Jesus is, suicidal thoughts should not have a place there. Clap one time if that makes sense. I'm telling you, praise is a weapon. How many of you came in here feeling some type of way or holding residue from something bad that happened this week? Raise your hand. Give God praise right now in this building. Stop. Why did I have you do that? Because we have to openly resist the enemy. How do we openly resist the enemy? I'm not giving you the satisfaction of being upset about this thing. I'll be tempted to be upset, and I may need a moment, right? But that's why the Bible says be transformed by what? By what? Say it with your chest be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm going to renew my mind in what? Into the things of God. I'm the righteousness of God. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with Jesus. So because I believe in Jesus, I'm righteous. And what does righteous mean? Put it back up on the screen. What does righteous mean? Put it back up on the screen. Righteous means what? It means I'm good. I'm honorable. I'm faultless. I'm legitimate. God-fearing, innocent, just, Noble-minded, sinless, high-minded, worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. Who says I'm worthy? God says I'm worthy. What, what sense does it make to me what you say I am? You lame. No, I'm worthy. Bro, you fake. No, I'm noble. You a scary little boy. No, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm fearless. And I was fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know who you are. You got to believe who you are. That's the only way you can walk 
in the victory that has already been laid out. The problem is we keep trying to get a victory we already have. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's who I am, it's not who I'm trying to be. It's who I am, it's not who I'm trying to be. Say it, it's who I am. It's not who I'm trying to be. It's who I already am. 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 I need you, I'm, saying, I'm making you repeat it because this is what you need to repeat to yourself when you're in your room and you've made the mistake. I was speaking to a young lady this past week. She came to me, she said, Pastor Anthony, I messed up. I said, what'd you do? She said, I lost my virginity. I said, okay. I said, well, now what? I feel horrible. I said, so what are you gonna do with that feeling? I don't know. No, you do know. But just like in a basketball game, it's easy in practice, but when the whistle blow, it hit different. How many athletes do I have in here? Raise your hand. How many of you know it hit different when the bell rang, when that whistle blow, and it's game time, shots that you've made 100 times in practice and you miss? The difference is you miss now and it really counts. The difference is you miss now and the whole crowd, you got a stadium full of people, and you can hear their cheers and their boos. Ooh. They really want you to win, so when you miss the catch, ooh, but does that miss define who you are? No, you stay on a good foot and you keep going. So it's not, what you, it's not what you did, it's what you do with the feeling of what you did after it's done. But after it's done, understanding and believing wholeheartedly that you are still the righteousness of God. And that's what I told that young lady. I said, I'm not upset with you. I'm not angry with you. Are you disappointed? A little bit. But I know who you are. You come to church every Sunday. I know what I put in you. I know what your parents put in you. You are not the sum total of this mistake. And then she began to go into how she felt afterwards. I said, and what happened? He was different. Let me share this with young ladies. Young men, sorry fellas, I gotta do it to you. <laughs> young men become, become very intelligent when it comes to conquest. I'm trying to, I'm trying to say it the right way because we're streaming. Maybe one of you can articulate it for me a little bit better. Do I have any articulate people out there that can, uh, that can help me out? Anybody? Help me out here. Can you help me out? You want to articulate it for me? Huh? What am I saying? Young men get very intelligent when it comes to conquest. Huh? Well, you say what now? They could give somebody the mic. What you say? I said, uh, uh -huh. I was just going to say, um, what? They know how to get what they want. Right. They can't tell you what four times four is. But when it comes to the conquest, what is the conquest? To get what they want. What do they want from the young lady, young man? What, what they is, want. What they what? Because <laughs> I can't say it. I can't say it, but I'm like, ooh, what, you, what they want? They want them, I guess. They want what? They want that girl. They want that girl. What they want from that girl? Ah! I'm gonna give somebody the mic. Raise your hand if you want the mic. Yep, give the, 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 the. What, what they want, boy? What they want, boy? What they want, boy? I don't know how to say without being inappropriate, <laughs> so um, I, um, let's just say that, let's just say. Um, they want the yams. Oh my goodness. They Young. wanna act on their lust. Who said that? Who, let me see your face. I, it's dark and you're... Oh, what's up, what? That ain't him. 
I know. I know. Yes. That's a little hard. Man, come here, man. Come up here, man. You was the one who just said that? Say it again. Young men want to act on their lust. They want to act on their lust, man. It's good to see you, boy. I ain't seen you since you was this big. Look at you, man. Looking like your daddy, man. Boy, you about to bring me to tears, man. I'm getting old, man. Look at you. Man, you was, you got, man, go on back to your seat. I love the way you said that. Babe, send him some money. Give her your cash out. Let me turn this flashlight off. <laughs> Had to see. I couldn't see. All right. But young men get very intelligent when it comes to what they want. And lust is an insatiable desire that can never be quenched. It's an insatiable thirst that can never be quenched. Lust looks a lot like love, but takes you to a different destination. Clap one time if that makes sense. If he loves you, then he'll wait for you. Clap one time if that makes sense. So the young lady was explaining to me and I found myself having to combat her condemnation. And I'm like, why are you, why do you feel, how do you feel? She said, I feel guilty. I feel ashamed. I said, why do you feel ashamed? Because guilt is feeling bad for what you've done. Shame is feeling bad for who you are. Because I had something and I held it for so long and I just easily gave it up. And I looked at her, I said, I'm not mad at you and God's not mad at you. That's the truth. But you have to believe that for yourself. Let me tell you something, young people. You're going to make mistakes. You're not going to do everything right. Stop expecting perfection from yourself, but begin to trust on the perfection on the inside of you, because if you trust the perfection on the inside of you, it'll keep you from making a lot of mistakes that you wouldn't have had normally made. Clap one time if that makes sense. It's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. He won't fail you. He won't. He won't. You are the apple of his eye. He loves you. He loves you more than Satan hates you. And his love will rule greater always than the mistakes. They're, your crazy can't outdo God's love for you. Get that out of your head. Oops, I messed up. I'm going to hell. Impossible. And I said it. People don't go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. You ever thought about this? Unbelievers, right? People who don't even believe in Jesus. I've seen them be in life or death situations. You know what they scream? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I thought you ain't believe in Jesus. Yeah, but that's when you become the majority. You see, the people that you're trying to be like really want to be like you. But you've got to get to a point where you're bold enough to be who God created you to be and not who the world is intending for you to be. Clap one time if that makes sense. I've got one last point. And we'll close here. I love you guys so much and I believe in you. Some of you think that some of the stories you tell me about the things that you're going through. Oh, Pastor Ant, man, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. Listen, if I could, well, I am writing a book. But it shows the intricate details of just how far gone I was. And even in that, I was still considered the righteousness of God. When you take your last breath and you go to heaven, you're going to see people there you would never think would have made it. 
effects. Philippians 3, 8 and 9, New Living Translation. Philippians 3, 8 and 9, New Living Translation. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Keep going. And become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. It depends on belief. Now, here's the thing that we keep missing. We keep trying to work hard at faith. It's not our faith. It's his faith in us. What do you mean, Pastor Ed? What I mean is he is the author. He is the finisher. He is the continuance of our faith. He started it. He's there with you in the beginning. He's there with you in the middle of it, and he's already there at the end of it. So move in the right tense. I'm not trying to be righteous. I, I'm not trying to be righteous. I, 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 I am righteous now. Fight against those stupid lies the enemy has been trying to tell you. Lies don't hold weight unless you give it weight. How do I give a lie weight? You pay it attention. Stop! I'm screaming. I'm just passionate. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 and 22. Colossians 1 and 22. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, here's the result, here's the part that you benefit from. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and what? And what? And what? You are, you are what? Holy and what? Holy and what? As you stand before him without a single fault. It's who I am. It's not who I'm trying to be. Do you receive that? Do you receive it? Do you believe it? It's not something you're trying to achieve. It's already been achieved. My last point, point number five, and I got a graphic that I want to put on this screen right here. Point number five. Come on, squad. Point number five is the ear is like a womb. Whatever you listen to, will eventually be conceived and born into your reality. Be careful what you listen to. Now there was a graphic that I gave you guys. Is, do you have it? You see that? Whatever you listen to will eventually be conceived and born into your reality. Choose carefully what you listen to. Faith cometh by hearing, so does fear. Sometimes you got to stop people mid-sentence. I didn't want to cut you off. No, you know what's for you and what's not for you. Somebody come up to you, they say, you're a weak student. You're a weak football player. You're a weak basketball player. You're a weak leader. You're a weak woman. 
you're a weak man. You got to cut them off. Anytime you hear your and then the word after that is bad, say, hold up. Oh, what you got? I'm the righteousness of God. Anyway, you understand? Be mindful of who you lend your ear to. People have to learn how to trust God, y'all. So your ear is like a womb. Let's go to Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 in the New Living Translation. It says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Well, fear comes by hearing. And that's hearing the bad news of the enemy. And sometimes it's easy to believe the bad news of the enemy because it matches your decision making. But it doesn't match the new creature that you've become on the inside. Man is a, you possess a, and you live in a, when you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, what part of you becomes a new creature? Huh? Say it with your chest. Your spirit becomes a new creature, but your mind remains the same. So the whole process after you accept Christ as, as your Lord and personal Savior is to commit to a lifetime of renewing your mind and being transformed by the renewing of your mind from God's word, not from the enemy's word. I'm going to make sure that my mind lines up with the promises of God. And the promises of God describe me. They're not things that I'm aspiring to be. The promises of God describe me. They are not something that I'm aspiring to be. The promises of God describe me now, active. I've got motion. You've got motion. Now, stop standing still in the lies of the enemy. How much more he got to tell you? Satan is a what? So why do you listen to a liar when he's telling you, I'm a liar? Does it make sense? I don't care about what they say. What do you care about? What he says. And he says, as I've shown you in Scripture, you are faultless. You are blameless. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the righteousness of God. Put the words up for righteous. You are good. You are noble. You are worthy. That's who you are. I can't believe that for you. You have to believe that for yourself. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Give God some praise in this building. Now, I'm getting ready to give you your declarations, and then we're going to go into praise and worship. But I don't want you to view praise and worship as just singing songs. I want you to hear the words that come with these songs, okay? And when you sing them, think about it. If somebody comes up and calls you fake, and you, what, 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 what pisses somebody off? And I'm sorry I used that word, but it's okay. What aggravates the mess out of somebody that's trying to hurt your feelings? Say it again. So if the enemy got you feeling some type of way and you start praising God, <laughs> he's like, I just tried to take you up out of here and you're dancing and singing and you're smiling. Yeah, but you don't feel good. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm rebelling against that feeling. I'm rebelling against that feeling and I'm giving God all the praise. I'm giving God all the glory. I'm giving God all the honor. I refuse to lose. I'm standing on my victory. I'm standing on who God created me to be and not who the world wants me to be. Doggone it, I believe in Jesus. And because he's on the inside of me, there is nothing, nothing, nothing on this planet that I can't do. Why? Because he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's say these declarations. And I want you to say it with your chest on the first time. 
Repeat after me. Say, I, may, I am made righteous. My mental and physical health prosper. I have favor with people in high places. I'm growing daily in my walk with Christ. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. God loves me and there is nothing I can do about it. God supplies all of my needs. My future is secured in Jesus Christ. My GPA is above average. I am successful at everything I put my hands to. In Jesus name, give God some praise in this building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're out there and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. I'm going to ask a simple question. If you're out there and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you've heard this message and you say to yourself, I want to know this Jesus that has set me free so that I can walk in this freedom. If you're out there, I just want you to raise your hand. Nobody's watching you. I'm not going to have you come up. I just want you to raise your hand. I see your hand. Nobody's watching you. All eyes are closed. All heads are bowed. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand high so I can see it. I see you at one. I see one. I see two. I see two. If you're out there and you hadn't accepted Christ, you want to make the best decision of your life, I see the two going once going twice. So y'all make some noise for the two people that raised their hand. Make some noise for the two people who accept in Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Y'all could do better than that. You could do better than that. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. For those of you that raised your hand, I'm not going to make a spectacle out of you. I just want you to simply repeat after me. Say, Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. And on the third day, you rose and defeated death. So everything that you took on you, you took on you so that I don't have to deal with those things. So I surrender my spirit, my soul, and my body to you. I accept you as my God, as my Lord, as my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Y'all shout for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as the praise team comes forth, you know what, before the praise team comes forth, because I want to go out with a celebration. I've got this group text thread called Ants Angels. And it's two people in that thread with me. It's my wife and my assistant, Chastin Lusborough. Chastin, can you come up here for a second? <laughs> 